the wilderness. The place PKers lived for, yet now PKing is almost literally dead content. But why? Should there be a wilderness rework and should Jagex attempt to make PvP relevant again or should the wilderness be removed from the game entirely? Or should we just leave it as it is right now? Opinions on the wilderness vary depending on the player and I thought it would be an interesting idea to make a video on the wilderness and PKing. And so did you guys, so when you're ready, grab your cup of tea, sit back, relax and enjoy. When you think of the wilderness, what's the first thing that comes to your mind? For most of you, it will probably be skilling and the occasional annoyance of a PK disturbing you getting your gains. This is exactly what the wilderness turned into, a place to skill if needed and then never return to. And this is only the case for methods that are actually better than their training counterparts outside of the wilderness. Some examples of these could be the mid-level agility training course from levels 48 with boosts, safe cracking for thieving from levels 90 and beyond, or runecrafting through the abyss. In fact, let's quickly go over all of the content the wilderness has to offer. Currently in the wilderness you can train thieving with safe cracking, slayer for wilderness slayer, and yes that's twice on the list I know, runecrafting through the abyss and soul altar through the wilderness, prayer through the chaos altar, hunter with black salamanders and charming wolves, farming with the farming patch, that's not really that much training but you know, it's still a bit of training, divination through cursed energy but now hall of memories is actually better, combat through the abyss, there are better methods again, and agility for mid levels at the wilderness agility course. Slayer in particular gets you access to a rather good slayer creature being the lava strike worm which is really good consistent money because of the searing ashes they drop. You can also make money with the bloodroot trees in the wilderness for the criminal bolts, though these trees can also be found outside of the wilderness. This, you have some bosses which do not make you that much money being the KBD, the elite version of the Lava Strike Worm being the Wildy Worm and the Chaos Elemental. We also have Revenants, Warbands of course for farming, construction, herblore, mining and smithing training and of course PKing. All of these skilling methods with some exceptions are actually used quite often because it is worth doing them. However, Wilderness Slayer and Wilderness Bossing generally is not. In the Wilderness you have three main bosses being the King Black Dragon, Chaos Elemental and the Waldy Worm. If you are a member you can't even really consider the King Black Dragon a Wilderness boss as you don't have to enter the Wilderness to kill this boss and therefore don't need to consider the risks. The Waldy Worm is a boss version of a Lava Strike Worm that spawns occasionally so it isn't always available, so not really a true boss either. The Chaos Elemental really is the only true boss in the Wilderness. But wait, with all the power creep since EOC, you can't really consider this a boss anymore either. There are literally slayer creatures that deal more damage and have more HP than this little elemental boy. Excluding the Wildy Worm, the current wilderness bosses are incredibly boring for any decent player. They are bad experience and bad money on average. Sure, the Chaos Elemental has some rare expensive drops like the Revenant drop table, like the Satyr's Warhammer, but the chances of getting a good drop out of all of the rare drops is slim. At the same time, you're risking getting PK'd by the very select few PK'ing out there left, and that makes these bosses even worse money per hour. So how exactly could Jagex make a change in this? Simple. Have at least one boss with some interesting mechanics, maybe even an rage mechanic, worth killing in the wilderness. Old School, for example, does actually have multiple Warfall bosses in the wilderness. An example of this could be Vinanatis or Vetion, or however you pronounce that. They have multiple bosses in the wilderness. Why can't we have multiple as well? Now, I may be a little PVM biased here, but they could also add a skilling boss to the wilderness. Make it like Big Game Hunter, but better. This boss could make you some consistent money or have some kind of rare drop for a new item or weapon, however this itself causes some issues if not done correctly. That new weapon can't be bad or it would be considered dead content on release together with the boss. If there isn't consistent money involved, that boss would be completely dead content. If the weapon is too good, it will piss off the current high level PVMers because of the existing high level weapons that will drop in price. For example, it couldn't be a tier 95 weapon. Definitely, definitely not. 
This could be solved by making the weapon a special niche weapon, just like the Pterosaur Maul from Big Game Hunter, or turning it into a spec weapon. However, that would only increase the amount of Switchscape already in the game, and as I'm personally not a fan of Switchscape, I'd rather not have it be something like that. They could also make it a unique hybrid type weapon at tier 85 or so. Just like the Sun Spear, but better. To then not devalue existing tier 85 weapons, it would have to be created using weapons of the same tier, or repaired with some other kind of existing weapon. This has also been done with the weapons you create from the Lava Strike Worm drops, requiring a Staff of Light, Abyssal Whip, or Dark Bow, depending on the type of weapon. The reason I'd like to see a boss in the wilderness is because the extra risk of losing your loot can add to the fun factor and make it more intense or tedious depending on your view. Something else that's similar to a boss could be a creature that roams around the wilderness with a large aggro range, much like Revenants did years ago. You know, back when we feared being attacked and killed by Revenants when walking to Clan Wars for example. Oh man, those were some good spooky times. By making this creature or boss extra powerful, it could make anyone entering the wilderness extra alert or <laughs> annoy the hell out of people. Again, this would depend on the type of player and playstyle. Okay, this one is going to sound a little crazy, but I've played games with something like this. What if they added a wilderness creature that was too hard to kill with a small group and only killable with 10 or more people? Much like raids, but then in the wilderness. This would require clans to go out into the wilderness to kill the large roaming creature together. But this creature spawns smaller minions that can be seen as little mini bosses that can also be killed for the same type of loot, but then with a smaller chance of rare or good drops. Let me know your thoughts down below, but I just love the idea of some kind of mothership wildy rage thing. Or oh, I've gone crazy, you tell me. A different way of adding a new weapon or item to the wilderness could be through skilling. Currently, you can make a large rune pouch by combining 100 magical thread. These magical thread are obtained from rune crafting through the abyss. They could also add a special type of tree in the wilderness, which you can chop for logs to fletch into a base of a new weapon or item. But with a twist, of course. If you chop these logs, you are attackable by all players, much like the demonic skull, to make it more interesting and keep the market from crashing. Heck, they could even split it up into gaining materials from an already existing scaling method like safe cracking in the wilderness, and a boss drop for the blade, and you being able to create another piece with newly added scaling methods. This could end up making an interesting bit of content and it might bring back some PKing and life in the wilderness. That's the thing though, do we want PKing back into the game? Do people really still care for PvP? I honestly don't know. I do know that the only thing in game that really gets my blood pumping and even gets me shaking from adrenaline or hype is PKing. The only time I have had this with PVM was my first time doing Jad, the Fight Kion and Talos. After having done all the previous things, I have never experienced such a thing again until I went PKing with friends again a few months ago. Video linked in the card section of the video by the way. It's incredible, the rush and the chance of getting someone's stuff if you actually end up killing someone with good gear and possibly even smiting them for their noxious weapon is almost indescribable. Or giving someone some payback. But do I get that rush because I barely ever go PKing and I'm not used to it like PVM or do I get that rush because it's super fun and intense? Again, I don't know for sure. BKers and BKing used to be more popular before the controversial evolution of combat updates. Nowadays, BKing is pretty much what you could consider dead content despite Jagex attempting to revive it multiple times by adding or changing things in the wilderness, and none of these changes have really revived the wilderness or encouraged BKing to return to its former glory as one of the three main pillars of RuneScape being PVM, PvP and Skilling. Removing Bounty Hunter because of bot farms and placing the Emblem tier system into Wilderness Slayer didn't help either. I believe PKing is also slowly dying in old school RuneScape as well, with the exception of competitive game modes like Deadman mode, but I could be wrong. Again, I don't play old school RuneScape, but I've heard some things here and there. Speaking of competitive PvP game modes, do you guys remember Darkscape? That version of RuneScape 3 was pretty popular, but it did have a lot of its own issues. 
If you didn't get to play Darkscape, I do think you missed out on something rather unique. Back to the regular wilderness and Peking though. The current combat system, despite being clunky, works fine for bossing, but for PvP it's a little different. The combat triangle doesn't seem to be so balanced in PvP. Take the abilities that knock off Prayer, for example, being Havoc, Smash, Dragon Breath, and Snipe. The damage values for these abilities are different, yet they do the same thing. Snipe takes a lot longer to charge up, while the other abilities are instant. This means when PKing at higher skill levels, Snipe can be cancelled out by the other player running away to force walk the player, and even if the player is using Nightmare Gauntlets, it can still be cancelled out by running away or running behind a tree. Now, Dragon Breath is also an AoE ability, aka Area of Effect ability, hitting targets in a 3x3 radius. Why? Other abilities like Needle Strike, Dazing Shot, Sonic Wave and their melee equivalents all have the same damage values, but these abilities that knock off Prey in PvP do not. Magic and Ranged also have access to extra useful stunning abilities in PvP on locks called Shock and Horror for Magic, and Demoralize and Rout for Ranged. These abilities are unlocked from the Scare Tactics book, and these knock you back in PvP while also stunning you. Now even though the combat triangle is a little strange and Ranged should be beating Magic, Melee should be beating Ranged and Magic should beat Melee if players are on equal skill levels and using the exact same gear, I sometimes feel like melee is extremely powerful in the wilderness with hard-hitting bleeds with greater barred rotations and slaughters and kicks and stuns. It's a bit personal, but it depends on your gear of your opponent and your skill level and the opponent's skill level. So it just ends up being a matter of opinion, but I think melee is extremely powerful in the wilderness if the other player does not know how to kite you. Now, I ended up asking what combat style other people found the most powerful in the wilderness on Reddit, and I ended up with these replies. The replies were definitely different depending on the opinion, but the majority of the players mentioned magic being powerful. The same goes with melee at the high level, unless the player is experienced and knows how to kite that player using melee. And ranged at the higher levels was considered weak, not everyone said this by the way, by a couple of Redditors because you can cancel out snipe. It's a little tricky, but I'm pretty sure that wilderness PvP is definitely not balanced. Now there's another problem with the wilderness and it's the difference in gear. Now if someone is using tank armor and you're using lower tier weapons, for example the clips you saw of me using Abyssal Wand and Orb versus someone with Elder Rune armor which is budget armor for the wilderness but super powerful because of the high defense bonus, damage reduction, stuff like that. Tank armor is extremely powerful in the wilderness, especially something like Acto even if you're using tier 90 weapons, as I've noticed this when doing the deathmatch PvP game, when I was parling my friends using, you know, trimmed masterwork armor, noxious Scythe, dry gores, you know, perked out everything. If you're using Acto, you can tank people so well, it's insane. Even if multiple people are parling you with tier 90 weapons, let alone a few noobs in the wilderness, like me and my friends using Abyssal Wands and Orbs and Pink Skirts and stuff, parling this guy with Acto in the wilderness at Revenants, we had no chance of killing him. And the problem with Acto is that it's actually time-gated armor as you need to collect it over time from doing raids every two days. Which is kind of unfair, in a way. And defenders are also very powerful in the bullness, but those are just expensive pretty much and kind of time-gated because you have to kill the bosses to upgrade it each time. But you know, it, let's just leave it at that. Now, PvP should be about getting loot while having fun, correct? Well, the problem is that, at least currently, the wilderness is a massive skillderness, and not necessarily a PvP area. This then results in non-PvPers getting PK'd for almost zero loot and their demonic skull, which is 550k, because the PKer cannot find any decent fights in the vast area of the wilderness. The PKers left in the game are quite literally hurting their own economy or playstyle. The more skillers that get PK'd, the more skillers that might think, well damn this place and me risking my stuff or my demonic skull, I'll take the slightly slower experience rates over the wilderness. As walking back to let's say the agility course takes time and therefore your experience per hour goes down. This then results into even less people going inside the wilderness, making it even more empty. The exact same thing happened when Jagex nerfed Cursed Energy and the Divine Magic in the Wilderness, making it so that bots have a harder time collecting the energy as they can get attacked by any player regardless of their combat level, and people making Divine Charges in the Wilderness losing their Divine Magic on death. In turn, this led one of the best ways to train Divination at the time to become almost dead content. 
Oh, by the way, if you went on a small break from RuneScape at the time, and you came back six months later, you wouldn't actually receive a warning message when bringing your Divinomatic into the wilderness for the first time. This caused some returning players to think they were safe using their Divinomatic to get Divine Charges, and they lost it after getting killed. In my opinion, it makes sense to have better scaling methods in the wilderness than outside of the wilderness in terms of experience rates, because risk and reward, quite simple. It's just sad to see that this has indirectly turned PKing into people purposely killing skillers for almost zero loot, which is not a good thing. There have been many player suggestions to add in some kind of item saving mechanic for a fee and have the PKers receive a certain amount of coins on drop instead of nothing and items being lost into the abyss. For example, a Blood Amulet of Fury that costs a whopping 10 million GP will only give the PK 50k coins on death. The player that then has died in the wilderness will lose the item completely, making it a lose-lose situation. Another example, Silverhawk Boots and Charges. I myself learned this the hard way many years ago, after getting killed in the wilderness at the agility course, I lost all my 400 charges and the guy PKing me probably got nothing at all except for a few coins. Having a death fee system in place or higher coin reward could benefit both non-PKers and PKers, but it could also encourage people to PK for coin farming, which shouldn't be the case, but I'm sure Jagex could think of a decent solution for this. Realistically, fixing or reworking the wilderness is by far one of the hardest things the developers could ever attempt to do. I personally would like to see some kind of wilderness rework that could change it into an interesting bit of content. Not per se to revive PKing, as that's probably not what most of the RuneScape 3 players of this time are looking for, but something to give us players an incentive to actually go there and do things because a little skill training and wilderness slayer aren't exactly exciting. The skill methods could have easily been content outside of the wilderness, I'm talking about the current things like the Chaos Altar, you know, Charming Moths, but they aren't. And Wilderness Slayer is almost pointless apart from point farming. I don't think many players see reworking or changing the Wilderness as a priority of dev time and that somewhat saddens me. Some players think the Wilderness and then partly balancing PvP is what's keeping them from properly changing combat and they want to see it removed and honestly in some respects I kind of agree. But at the end of the day I can always hope to see that Wilderness rework someday and with that being said, thank you guys for watching the video to the end. If you did, don't forget to comment frog down below. I know that was random. Catch you guys later. Peace.